everyone, welcome into another edition of Mike Chuck. I believe this is episode three in the rebrand of of uh, Mike Chuck, which used to be um, called the NEB Preps Wrestling Show. Anyway, we have a uh, good show for you this week. I think it's a pretty good show. Um, I'm a little nervous about what Chuck is even going to say or do today. So uh, that one is a little... <laughs> That one's a little. You're just on edge because you, you you went to Costco and Hy-Vee. Yeah, I mean, we're, Why? Recording, we're recording this on Friday, the the day before Christmas Eve, and you know when Christmas Eve or Christmas lands on a holiday, it's probably not a good idea to go to the grocery store or stores um, at the same time. Even though your, wife, your wife's a saint, She's I'm a the saint. one that went to the store. She's a saint putting up with you. Oh man, look at you. Okay. Um, <laughs> look at your dumb name this week, too. Uh, All right. So this show, let me break down, preview the show. So we have Lincoln East coach Jeff Rutledge will join us. Um, we also have any wrestles. Cody Manquist, I believe, will join us. We're hoping to make that happen. So if not, um, we can figure that out. But I heard, I heard a rumor, Mike. I heard a rumor. What's that? that? Santa might be stopping through on this. Santa may be have Santa might make an appearance as well. So, um, yeah, it's uh, this will be. I don't know where this is going to go, but uh, that's kind of the fun of Mike Chuck here. So, <laughs> um, and we'll probably break down a little bit of the first, you know, couple weeks and everything that of the, of the season. So, kind of go yep. through that. That's why we're having uh, Cody on a little bit later. But our first guest this week. Is Coach Rutledge from Lincoln East. Coach, thanks for joining us. I uh, appreciate your time. And um, this is your first appearance on our uh, little thing we call the wrestling show. Uh, but it's basically just me and Chuck talking crap to each other. That's why, that's why I love it. I, I watch pretty much every show. And it's, yeah, it's, this is, you guys do great things for the sport. You're funny. Great personalities. And uh, I want to see the match. That's all I can say. I saw it at Council Bluffs. And I, uh, my right neck, my, I had a neck thing. Yep. Yeah. But, sure, uh, you did. Here. <laughs> sure. You did. Um, right, I'm ready to go right now. So I think what, what, so as far as the, this match we keep talking about is Chuck said he could take me down. And I said he could not take me down in a period. So two minutes, no chance. Right. So, but, but, but you can't just back up. There'll be a referee. There'll be plenty of referees. Okay. All right. Watch. A stall call or not? Do you, I mean, are we yeah, not? I mean, it's a two down. Okay. You, <laughs> you can't just like turn around and run though. Oh, I won't. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. Um. Anyway. So the part, I think I'm pretty sure that we have now gotten it set up to be, uh, this will happen at the Metro uh, conference tournament. Darn, I'm not going to be there. Well, yeah, but I'm sure there'll be video. All right. Oh, there'll be plenty of, plenty of I'm video. Sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure there'll be plenty of video. I just hope I don't throw up. <laughs> <laughs> if we're being honest. Soft. <laughs> okay. All right, Coach, we're here to talk about not Chuck's inability to take me down. Uh, more on the Spartans and Lincoln East and how good of a year you guys are having. Um I have brought up the last couple of weeks. I'm like, hey, Miller South is clearly like the top of the food chain in Class A. Can Lincoln East um, challenge Millard South this year when it comes to the team race? And I believe that that it might be a little closer than people think. I know you both were at the Council Bluffs Classic. They won the event. It's going to take some, you know, it's going to be a Herculean effort. But, but I think you guys are – uh, probably clearly number two, maybe. I, I don't know. There's a lot of tough teams. Uh, yeah. You know, we Norfolk at Flatwater Fracas gave us all we could handle. You know, it came down to the very last match, and a lot of things could go different. So there, there's a lot of quality teams right now in Class A all across the board. I definitely think that we're all looking towards Millard South. They're the, the team that are, you know, they're the returning champs, and uh, they've got quality kids up and down the lineup. Uh, but we're going to do everything that we can. I, I love our team. I mean, our, our kids are phenomenal kids. Uh, they've really bought into the idea of development. And, and you know, I'm, 
I'm all about working in silence and, and doing everything within our control to be the very best team that we can be at the end of the day. And, and we're going we're gonna to throw our hat in the ring and, and see what we can do in February. So looking forward to it. Coach, I really enjoy your guys' style that you have down there where you just keep wrestling through everything. Um, you know, you, if, if anyone's watched Lincoln East the past, you know, how many other years you've been there now uh, with, with Coach McCurdy, uh, your guys just don't quit in positions. Um, how do you drill? Do you drill that daily? Like what's what how do you get into that mindset in your room? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's a it's a daily practice. You know, I think more more than anything, it's less less drilling and more mindset is is, uh, you know, be tough through through six minutes of wrestling. And, uh, and and there's examples to point at, you know, when 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 one kid does it right and keeps wrestling through positions and maybe he was down and all of a sudden he wins a, a close match, then it spreads to the rest of the team and other than other people have the same belief. So, um, you know, I, I think a lot of it, Coach McCurdy has some incredible just mindset talks that he gives kids and just, he's got an incredible perspective on the sport of wrestling. And so I think um, it's, yeah, kids just buying in and, and, and believing in, in the process. And, and again, the development is huge for us is that, you know, on paper, I think if you look at Millard South and Lincoln East, you're, you're going to at the beginning of the year say there's no way, but uh, if we can develop and, and do everything that we can to be the best that we can be, who knows? You know, and so that's that's an exciting challenge that we that we have for the kids and and for ourselves to be the best that we can be and focus on us. How do you feel the first, um, I guess, couple of weeks have gone? You've had I mean, Council's Cat Classic, uh, Grand Island, the Fracas. I mean, that's, those are two pretty big events and, and quick challenges right out of the box, I guess, to start the season. Yeah, I mean, I, I love our schedule. I love being able to challenge our guys and really our philosophy is that we're going to find some losses for our guys. You know, as a coach, I hope when February comes that I don't have anybody that doesn't have a loss on the record because I truly believe that, that we learn best through our losses. And so, you know, going to these tournaments like uh, council bluffs classic and flatwater fracas, it gives us our kids an opportunity to see the elite, the elite kids. And and then it provides a little bit more motivation in the, in the practice room to, to make those improvements. But uh, I, I would say, I've been really pleased at uh, the culture that's been that's been created through our program. Uh, it wasn't easy, especially at the fracas this last week. And we, we made a lot of mistakes, uh, which is good, you know, in, in terms of de- development and wanting to, to, to get better. And so there's a lot of things that we can point out and fix. Uh, but it's always more fun to win while you do those things. <laughs> How do you graduate a few studs and then come back and you might be even better? Like, how, how does... How how did you guys build that to where it's just next man up? I just I think it's a testament to the kids, you know, and their their work ethic in the off season. We've got an incredible opportunity now with with Travell at Nebraska and, and running this Nebraska Wrestling Training Center here here in town. And so we've got a lot of kids that are that are wrestling, you know, um, eight, nine, ten months out of the out of the year, and that's that you know you, you can make an incredible amount of development again physically, but also Travell is. Uh, the guru of of mindset, and so our kids are training in really good environments, and, and and they're developing. They're they're getting better no matter where they're starting. And that's you know we've got a really big team, and we like it that way. I like I love wrestling and I, everything about it, and I think it teaches kids and tremendous values you know in life. And so any kid that we can impact, we're gonna we're gonna take into the program whether they're really good or really bad. And it's, it's interesting because the kids that you don't sometimes suspect to be contributors at the varsity level, uh, you know, when they just buy in and absolutely love the sport, they sometimes surprise you and they ended up being key contributors to your program. And that's, that's happening for us right now. I'd say. You, um, I mean, it's not, you guys, your program has been pretty good for a very long time how do you sustain the success i know you talk about mindset and all that but like what is there more than that i mean you have like max and like leaves and it's just like nothing changes right and there were the miller i mean they were yeah, miller south before like millard south right i mean they had right. won four what four in a row uh three in a row three in a row three. yeah i was a part of two so coach mccurdy gets to kind of put that on me so we i graduated and they won, or excuse me, no, you're right, you're right, four. So I graduated, and, and they won one more after me. So he gets to kind of throw that in on, 
in, in uh, to me that he he's got one more state title than I do. <laughs> but how do you keep, just keep it rolling, right? Like what? It, it's it's not, you're not going away. Haven't gone away. Like it it's and especially with new schools getting built, right? Yeah, you know that. Uh, again, I just say it's a testament to our kids and the com- commitment to wrestling. I, I I love wrestling. Coach McCurdy loves wrestling. You know, the school has become a wrestling school. So I, right. I, I think the tradition, you know, of of uh, loving wrestling, and and when kids just start to buy into that passion, and 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 then then you've got kids wrestling year round, and kids are wanting to do more, and and then the, you see the development. So. Uh, yeah, I just a testament to the kids and the tradition that was here b- well before I, I came as as the coach. You know, I think it, it really started uh, with Coach McCurdy Sr. We call him Old Dogger, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, he's kind of the godfather in Lincoln East Wrestling, and and I mean a tremendous leader as far as teaching values and 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 creating good people. But also, I mean, he he's the reason why I coach. Uh, and he was an incredible teacher of the sport too. So, so I, I would say there's some differences on in how he approached teaching the sport that Keen and I have been able to, uh, you know, adapt and 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 uh, you know bring to our practices as well. So, uh, yeah, probably starts starts with him. How many girls do you have out? Uh, Thirteen on the roster right now. So I think after break, uh, we've got one that's that's joining the Marines and she's graduating oh. early. So she's uh, so we'll go. Uh, down to 12, but, but 12 girls right now. And that's really exciting. It's been really, really fun to, to get into the girls wrestling and to have a, have a team for the first time. So How she got we... ready. She got ready for Marine boot camp with wrestling. Huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly why she, she joined. She said, I need to get in shape. So I told her I got just a thing. Great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the future of girls wrestling looks like in Nebraska? It's growing exponentially. Like, I mean, it's the fastest growing sport for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you look at other states and what it's doing there, and it's just, you know, building and growing incredibly. So, uh, you know, I, there's just the first two years, and we're already seeing a c- tremendous amount of, of momentum, and the skill level is is insanely high. You know, we've got these girls going to national tournaments now and, and doing really well, and so I'm just yeah, really thrilled to be a part of that uh, that movement here in Nebraska and, and now that Lincoln Public School. So this is our first year in Lincoln Public School. Right. Not a to have that, um, it's been it's been pretty special for for our girls. We had three girls finish the season last year on the boys team, and so now for them to have that opportunity, it's uh, just night and day, and it's it's been it's been pretty awesome. Wrestling, you know, females and not males certainly helps. Yes. That yes. helps. That helps. Yeah. So I got I got to know, in your opinion, who's the goat of Lincoln East wrestling? Oh man! Wow, on the spot. Wow. That's a that's a tough question. It's uh, man, Ooh. I don't know. That's a tough one. That's I, a tough one. I've, I mean, just the last few years, I've had the privilege of, you know, co- coaching Max Mayfield. You got Grant Lyman in there. Those were two absolute hammers. You got Keith Smith. Uh, you know, Chance Fry. Fry. <laughs> title. He got Chance Fry. Um, I mean, Brandon. Then you got a good. You got to go back to guys like you and Coach McCurdy, too. I mean, yep, yep. So, Coach McCurdy, so Keenan and I were in the stands when Coach McCurdy Sr. had his first state champion. His name was TJ Gagline. I can remember just thinking, like, that guy is the absolute man. Like, there is no human being better on earth than TJ Gagline. So, maybe I should have just went there. I'll I'll say TJ Gagline. (laughs) That's fair. I'll take it. I'll take it. Safe answer. How, how I'm gonna get, we're gonna stay history here. Um, how cool is it to like be a part of the program, lead the program ish um, that you just grew up watching? I mean, and, res- and wrestled for you know like with your best friend yeah, too. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I mean, just dream come true. Sometimes I have to pinch myself that I get to do it every day, you know, and so. I met Keenan. So Keenan was a kindergartner. I was a first grader. My, my uh, brother wrestled for coach McCurdy is his freshman year. He got recruited in, onto the wrestling team mm-hmm. and uh, just like immediately fell in love with Lincoln East wrestling, and everything about it. So to be able to do it with my best friend every day, it's yeah. I mean, there's, there's nothing better. Yeah. All right, coach. Uh, I think that's good. Chuck, you got anything else? I got one last. How did you get all those kids to stay so quiet while you're interviewing here? <laughs> Wait, that's a great question. I'm actually not at my house right now. Oh, 
Yes. I left my house. I'm actually at my brother and sister-in-law's house. So I said, hey, do you have a room that's going to be quiet, not having kids run through it? So <laughs> I, had to, I had to change locations. Uh, he's a planner. That's a coach right there. <laughs> <laughs> I know about that sometimes. I'll tell you that. <laughs> hey, Chuck, one one thing that I I, I greatly miss was uh, our Twitter battle on the dance the dance routines. Do you remember that? Oh, that was so great. Oh, man. that was awesome. So we got to bring that back somehow. I don't know exactly how we do it. Maybe you and Mike could do a dance or something, and then we'll. Respond. <laughs> We're, well, we're gonna, Mikey, we're gonna, go we're gonna do a dance. Let me tell you, he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna not take me down. I know that. There's the dance. <laughs> oh, we're yeah. dance battles. Those we'll were great. Be, we'll be dancing. He just will be. Uh, I'll be sprawled out on top of him, trying to take me down. That's what. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> All right, Coach. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Also. And for those that don't pay attention, Lincoln East Wrestling has a pretty good social media game, whether it be Instagram, Twitter's fine too. You know, like I don't know who's in charge of that. I'm guessing it's maybe you, probably not. McCurdy. Uh, McCurdy is the genius. Well, it started with Drew Etherton, who created our vlogs. And then when he left, he's like in some other country right now. <laughs> who knows, knows where Drew is? Right he was, at, he was at the World Cup. Yeah. yeah. So who knows where he's at now, but so Keenan took over that. And now I've actually got my brother-in-law who's a video guy that's looking to take over it now. So they're, they're a little bit shorter, but uh, that's what he does. And he, yeah, he does a great job. It's, it's really good. So yeah. congratulations or props to him. It, it, it is really good. So awesome. Thanks guys. All right, coach. Thanks, man. We'll see you. Uh, if not before, but probably definitely January 17th. Yes. Sounds good. Uh, we'll on, a that day. on a Tuesday for a duel. That yeah, might, sounds good. Might be pretty exciting. I don't know. Might have to make a stop down. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. All right, guys. Take care. Yeah. All right. That was fun. So, I mean, seriously, though, like Lincoln East is good, has been good forever. And what they're doing down there is um, it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty awesome to just see it continue to roll no matter what. I mean, they were they were the team to beat when I got involved in wrestling. You know, as a as a freshman in high school, mm-hmm. I mean, they were the they were the team to beat. They were like Millard South and Scott. You know that them and Scott would have been amazing battles at that time. I can't remember mm-hmm. if they ever dueled or not, but uh, yeah, Lincoln East is just crazy. The the length that's gone. Mm-hmm. And I, I was talking January seventeenth. Uh, they have a duel against uh, Millard South. So that's what I was referring to in that. So that should be fun. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I might have to make a make a little trip there, either west of 70. Where's it? Is it at, at Lincoln East or at uh, Millard South? I'm guessing at Millard South, but I don't know, and it's really not that far. To either go. way, Lincoln East is pretty easy to get. To I mean, me. if I'm passing 72nd, it's the same distance. You, you might you. as well be yeah. in North Platte, right? For you. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So let's have an, our next guest. Um, hello. Um, sorry. That's come my, on. Come that's on, man. So uh, can we get that edited out? Maybe. Um, <laughs> our next guest, who has uh, become uh, more of my friend than your friend, probably um, uh, Cody Manquist from Any Wrestle. So, Cody, hello. Thanks for joining. Hello. How are you guys? How many different um, school shirts do you have? Oh, well, this one is courtesy of Kale Streeter. You know, he's head coach out there at Logan View. And Great guy. I too. told him, I will support anyone that wants to send me a shirt. I know I've, I've heard Mike, you know, say, hey, hook me up with some swag. So I kind of stole that idea from him. And so I'll always represent. I know, you know, the legend down in Beatrice, uh, Coach Johnson and Coach Omar, they've always been – very nice. I usually get a new Beatrice shirt every year. So Coach Johnson is yeah. a lake named after him, right? Yes, that is true. Oh, wow. Um, I need to start this with uh, you guys going to tell the real story of how Mike Chuck came along. Yeah, I just thought about it one day, randomly. Yeah, randomly. Yeah, just Not, random. no babies were involved or anything. No, it was just a random. <laughs> we did. We did try to get Cody to name his his his. Oh um, yeah. We Michael, did try Michael Charles. 
Yeah, we did. We did try. <clears throat> we did try. Cody has a, a new baby. How old is he? He's, He's two months. You might hear him here every once two in months. a while. That's right. upstairs. So that's okay. Um, yeah. So we did very much so try and get him to. We we tried really hard. You know, whether it be Michael, Charles, some form of us two uh, naming his child, middle name, even. Yeah. Really happened, and then uh, through that process, I was like, "Hey, what if we called?" our show Mike Chuck and I'm like yeah kind of I love it I yeah, think it's great right. reason for that helmet above your head this one in the yeah. yeah yeah it's in a case for a reason but we won't talk about that yeah we'll talk about that another time yeah um so let's just kind of break down a little bit like surprises to start the right. year, if there are any surprises from a team or individual or um, like from A through D, doesn't matter. I think there's been a lot of good action this year. I know there's still some guys trying to get down to weight. And, you know, you have your Lincoln East, Millard South, they're kind of dominating A, Bennington and B, Broken Bow dropping down to C adds a new challenge down there. I would say one surprise would be David City. You know, they lost a lot of seniors last year. They got a great – you know, Coach Theme out there, he's just got like a revolving door. Just place another wrestler here, and they'll just keep going. Uh, Class D, Aquinas, done really well. Uh, High Plains, that's a nice team. Uh, and um, Sutherland's going to be tough as always. But I think for the most part, we have our four leaders. And now it's who's going to be the ones to catch them. You know, Which, I... Chuck, by the way. Uh, you say you're going to be making a stop on the 17th, but you kind of have to be there because we're streaming it. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you a team that I've been kind of surprised with in, in A is uh, Papio South. Yeah, they uh, got a strong core of freshmen. Yeah, Ian Hardy's pretty tough. He's pretty yeah. tough. He's really strong. Uh, he's been pretty tough in there at 120. He's a kid that I've I've known for a little while. So yeah, you got him. You got Caden Irwin, Reese Santa Maria. There's very strong group of freshmen. But yeah, Hardy came out with a bang on opening weekend. Yeah, it, beats Logan they, Edwards. Yep. So it's been Is, fun. What about the girls' side? Any real surprises? No, I don't think uh, Grand Island. I would say is just they're yeah. dominating right now. I mean, every yeah. week it's like they're winning another tournament. Opening weekend, what they went, they split their team up in two, and they each won the tournament. So, Green Island's been impressive. Uh, West Side, obviously, you guys talk a lot about them. They have some hammers on their squad. Norfolk's got a good squad. Papio, um, your normal West Point Beamer, South Sioux City Skyler, you know, from last year. I think those teams are going to be more depth wise have a whole lineup compared to like a West side where you're going to have four or five hammers, but they don't have a full lineup. What about like like a, a, on the boys side, Millard West feel like they've kind of. And they just made a couple weight changes. Oh yeah. Avery Russell dropped to 13. Enrique Haynes drops down to 20. If you guys remember CB classic, Kofax Christensen, kind of came in and he I mean, kind he got of into a fist fight. He got into yeah. a fist fight basically with uh, President Sanchez. A yeah. One point match. And, yeah, and then Enrique Haynes, they go over to Waukee this weekend and Waukee, or uh, Enrique Haynes pins Koufax in a minute 20. So, I think uh, everyone should keep an eye on. Chuck, you know them Haynes boys, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> yeah. 120's, 120's a Really deep there's, weight class right now. There's 12 to 14 kids that could legitimately win 120. And I don't know for how long, but, I mean, we may not have Jesse Lewis back this season. Yeah, we're that's still in the air. Don't know what's really going to happen with him this year, if he'll be back before the end of the year or not. And you really um, hope Dave he is. Guy he's, is another he's a, one he's that a lot he's of injured now for North Platte. Don't know if he'll be back. Don't know if Delano's going to come down to 20 or stay at 26, but yeah, Jesse, that that's a big blow if Norfolk can't get him back. Has it, at heavyweight, I just look at, you know, Terry, obviously, like, can anyone is anyone um, I mean, 
Yeah, there's a kid named Navarro Shunky up in South Dakota. That's about all that comes to mind. <laughs> he's a uh, he's done for the year. Yeah, he's done for the year. Yeah, he got torn up I mean, shoulder. Tyson, he just came out and he's just beaten everybody, and he's been pretty dominant about it. Yeah. Hey, Ch- uh, Mike, you, I know you've seen a lot of Elkhorn South football this year. They have a very impressive heavyweight freshman named Cooper Perrion. Oh. Huh. Yeah, so I didn't know if you got to see him at all in any of the football yeah, no. this year or not. Yeah, not that I uh, remember off the top of my head, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then Omaha North has, you know, they they have Tyler Stewart, they have really? Tyson Terry, and now they got a freshman at 195 that's been real tough. Mm. Yeah. It's been is, a lot of fun. Is there another – is there – so we know – Kale has is going for four. Like the next, who next one would be Kyler. Okay, that's why I was yeah. wondering. Yeah, because that yeah. Which you just got off the phone with Rutledge. Full tolling. Wow. Yeah. Last week at practice, that was a huge. Yeah. How do your mics going in and out? Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Um, the, and you said at practice with East, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, that was tough. Is it? Let's look ahead real quick before we maybe get out of here. And let you go. Is um, what's we talked about the duel January seventeenth. Metros obviously is always kind of a big one. Um, hack tournament, you know all the different tournaments. But yeah. is there is there certain matchups coming in January, the last like month of the season that are you know have your eye or or different events where. Um. Some matchups get out. First and foremost is the Norm Manstead Open. Oh, yeah. yeah. That is always a lot of fun. There, you have all four classes represented there up at Central College in Columbus. There's a lot of competition there, a lot of hammers, and you never know what's going to happen. It's always a lot of fun. Um, where are we? That's the third up? and fourth, right? Uh, or, it's the first weekend of January. Yeah, third, fourth, top of my head. Yeah, three, four. Yeah, whatever that is. Yeah, and then we'll be taking Chuck back out to the Wild West of Lexington for an always tough invite out there in Lexington. Uh, uh, it'll be interesting. Are they going to do the auction again? They might. Uh, one thing that's really fun is over Christmas break, Creighton Prep has a really good invite. Yeah, yeah, so it's, be- uh, it is. They had Metro basketball tournament. They like moved all this stuff around, and then they're they're like working around uh, because prep is one of the two, I guess, main sites now. So they're working yeah. around the the wrestling tournament to get it all that stuff. So, yeah, I was wondering about that. How all that works? That the girls tournaments at prep, the boys tournaments uh, at Bell West. First round of it is okay okay. yeah yeah and then it's all the west but anyway yes the manstead is the 6th and 7th of january yeah so that following week but you're right prep that prep event i remember stopping by there last year it's like i forget what day it is but it's uh it's on friday i believe yeah yeah if i remember right that's right so and that'll have papio creighton prep omaha north uh free Mm -hmm. that'll be uh our first richardson Mm -hmm. first terry matchup I was just gonna say that, yeah. That'll be the yeah. first first hit at that. So um uh, yeah. All right. Any, uh, final final what is your guys' plan for Christmas? You know, final goodbye to you guys. I don't know. Adult wish for a new quarterback for the Jets. How about yes, you, Charlie? Oh, uh just I wish I hope I don't throw up during this match. Oh wow. Yeah. That's that's my biggest goal, right? That's now. like a New Year's resolution thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you guys have a good day. Have a Merry Christmas. I'm sure we'll be texting. Always good catching up with you. All right, thanks, man. See ya. Have a good one, Cody. All right, so yeah, the nice little quick breakdown, Chuck. I think you're going to end the show. We got about a minute left here. I heard uh, I heard some the, some uh, sleigh bells on my roof there. Oh wow. Okay. Sleigh bells. So Santa's coming to town. Yeah, Santa. Santa's coming to town. I'm having some te- technical difficulties there. Oh, whoa. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. This is happening. Okay. I'm going to read you a little, little bedtime story, Mike. Okay. All right. 
Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the town, not a creature was stirring, except for Mike's frown. The referee pledged to keep it honest and fair. Mike had no tricks up his sleeve, not even in his hair. The crowd goes crazy as loud as can be, because they knew Mike was going on a flight for free. Fans erupt, and up goes the deuce. All you could hear was one giant oose. Happy holidays, Mike, Michael Lee. Yeah. Well, I like that. That's nice. I like that, but it it ain't happening. I'm just gonna tell you that's that's very clever of you, and it made me laugh and smile. So, um, okay, let's end this by me saying Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you, Chuck, my friend. We joke around a lot, but we are we become very good friends, and uh, I appreciate you and your time, and um, and maybe you're. Your brother too, I guess. Maybe he's all right. He's all right. Do you see Santa here? I just yeah. I'm him. sorry. I don't know where Chuck. I don't know where'd Santa go. He's, yeah. probably, he's probably delivering gifts at my house or probably. probably. So, yeah. So anyway, all right. We will see you. We might have a little uh, Christmas break version of Mike Chuck. We'll see how that goes. But if not, we'll be back after the first of the year. And uh, yeah, keep talking about wrestling. See you next year, brother. See ya. A Heard at Sports Network production.